Time once again for our bi-weekly chit-chat with Dr. Jamie Ronchetto. Uh, I don't want to say my veterinarian because I actually go see an actual uh, human physician, but she is the veterinarian of all three of our vehicle, uh, our vehicles, our beagles, I should say. Well, sometimes they act like vehicles. I don't know. They like to pull things around the house, uh, doctor. But uh, you just saw uh, Buddy, and thank you very much for taking care of him. And, Absolutely. Uh, and uh, it's nice to know that for an almost 15-year-old dog that, that uh, you seem to think he's doing pretty he's good. He's doing fantastic. So uh, I want to talk, though, a little bit about uh, it was National Pet or Awareness, uh, First Aid Awareness Month for mm-hmm. pets. Uh, we've kind of touched on this before in like maybe like in the outdoor settings or whatever, but there are times when things happen in the house. And with, with three dogs, sometimes one gets a little, a little territorial. Mm-hmm. And especially when it's a, a situation of a possibly a dominance thing between a male and a female, you know, Otis went after our little Daisy and just got her right on the ear, but it bled all over the place. Sorry if you're having oh, yeah. breakfast. I don't want to get too, too nutty here. But um, it's a situation where there for a, a, a brief moment, we were like, what do we do? Right. And fortunately, uh, you know, it stopped. We kind of penned her off. We kind of, but we had to like work it out. We didn't have a plan ahead of time in case something happened. I realized that. So there's, uh, we don't have like a pet first aid kit aside from like what we would use for humans. What do you do when when something like that, especially a sensitive part of the ear, and they don't they don't want to be treated. They just want to be left alone. Uh, these are situations where we should really think about, and especially in a situation where whether it's not it's one dog after the other or cats or. Um, something happens. I mean, thing they can fall just like we do. Things can fall on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what do we do? And uh, you know, in situations, what should we think about? I mean, we think about our kids and what we should do. And like I said, we keep first aid kids. But are there other things we should do to to keep that in mind for our pets? Yeah, all very good questions. Um, I definitely think it's good to keep a first aid kit for your pet um, because you do need a few different things um, that you wouldn't otherwise maybe think about um but certainly for cuts and things like that um keeping some bandaging material something that um isn't going to be too compressing but that will stay on there um certainly um cleansing materials um and some neosporin is always good to have on hand because that is safe to apply to wounds um and is good to kind of get started until you get get seen by a vet um if if um if the cut doesn't seem to stop bleeding then certainly you're going to probably need to take them in but oftentimes for things like oh ears like you mentioned feet um anything on the muzzle even the tiniest little wound like you saw can bleed a ton or seem to bleed a ton and they um, don't seem to care where they're bleeding yeah <laughs> they don't it's, <laughs> it's kind of like us like our our hands and feet and our head and our ears those tend to bleed more even if it's a tiny scrape so kind of keeping that in mind that it might look really bad but it might not be as bad as it seems um so pressure you know trying to get it to stop get you know cl- get them to calm down so their blood pressure will come down and then It'll stop. And this is a situation, too, because standard Band-Aids won't work on a pet. So what, right. do we, what do you recommend for bandaging material? So usually just um, some gauze, and then um, you can use... I'm trying to find the word, but there is like a, a bandaging material they can use over the gauze. I see. Um, kind of like what when, when whenever they have something, or, or I know that sometimes when you treat... Uh, pets or the vet treats pets, you, they kind of wrap it in gauze and a little bit of what almost looks like cotton but isn't. Is that what right. you're talking about? Yeah, that something like material, that. Yeah, like that will hold material. it on there but not be too compressive because right. you certainly you don't want it to get too tight. Right. Um, and something that will stick to itself and but not necessarily be really sticky to try to get it off you know, because they have fur, and then that does that yeah. doesn't feel good. Yeah, to they they try don't like that. Eh, trust me, they don't like that either. So yeah. that's good to know. So so things like neosporin are safe. Are there things that are not safe? Like uh, like what about? Do we want to stay away from things like rubbing alcohol and stuff like that, or is it? Well, alcohol is definitely going to burn if you use it in a, a cut. You know, like that. So I would stay away from that. I would just clean with some nice warm soapy water. Um, get it really, you know, cleaned out. Um, 
normal water is fine, washcloth, and then just apply some Neosporin. I think that's safer. And then especially in the case where if, if one dog bit the other, just in case, take them to the vet just in case there's some sort just of bacteria. In, or exactly, yeah. Okay. I mean, they, they don't have the cleanest mouths, you know, and that's bacteria true. can enter those little wounds. <laughs> little dirty mouth dogs that they are. So thank you very much. That That's good to know because uh, oftentimes it's that's the, we think they're just laying around and doing stuff, but they can get in trouble too, even at home. Right. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, uh, KHTS Home and Garden Show is uh, coming back on April 29th and 30th. Yeah. And you, uh, Cinema Veterinary Center, will be there. We will be there. We're going to have a booth there. And what will you be, what will we find when we come to uh, the booth? Um, we're going to have some giveaways. We're going to have some raffles um, and hopefully lots of information. So come with your questions. We're there to help you. Exactly. Yep. That's outstanding. So April 29th, 30th, uh, uh, joining over 300 vendors at the event at, is at Central Park and starting at 10 to, I believe, 5 uh, at least Saturday and possibly 10 to 4. But all that information is at scvhomeshow.com. Cinema Veterinary Center for all your uh, doggy and kitty needs located uh, conveniently on Cinema Drive in Valencia. That is uh, cinemavet.com. And the phone number is? 661-253-9300. Dr. Jamie Ronchetto, always a pleasure to have you stop Thank by you. and give great advice.